Hey, what's up, guys? Filterless here. Today, we're going to be covering this bad boy, the ROG Ally. And I'm going to show you all two different things. The first one is the free sync issue I found. You can see tearing all over the place if we scroll side to side and how to fix that for pretty much every game. The second will be the power levels. So you really don't want to use the defaults, and I'll show you why. You want to use manual for both plugged in and unplugged. And I'll show you the best power level. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is the tearing. You can see how it's tearing. And we're at about 40, a little over 40 FPS. So that just looks really bad. If you see it, get like real close. And you can just see it's, it's tearing all over the place. So the fix for this is FreeSync turns off if you set this to 60 hertz. So the actual display, we want to knock to 120. And then the tearing is gone. Completely gone. Same frame rate, same FPS in game, but the tearing has gone because at 120, FreeSync's enabled, it disables it at 60. And that is huge because I was trying to mess with games and I would go back and forth and I was wondering what's going on and that's what it was. So now for the power levels, let's go outside so I can show you those. As you can see, I have it capped at 25, and I will show you why. All right, so now we're outside. We'll just look at this ship that crashed. I actually cannot wait to start a new game on this for, uh, for this game. So you can see we're at 52 FPS at 25 watts. So what I'm going to do is bump this all the way to 30, at 5 additional watts. And let's see what frame rate we get. Come in here. 30. As you can see, one frame. So we're, we're getting one frame for five watts. That is not worth it. And higher temperatures, higher fan noise. I would, so this is why I recommend setting it when it's plugged in to 25 and i also recommend setting all three of these sliders to 25 and here's why if you look at this this is a 10 second boost so for only 10 seconds it's going to raise it to this enormous wattage level and cause your system to heat up your fans to kick on for 10 seconds this one's for two minutes as you can see so it'll run a higher watt for just two minutes. So unless you're doing work-related tasks, I wouldn't recommend this unless your gaming sessions are extremely short because then it's going to drop to this anyway. So you might as well just start off keeping the whole system cool instead of heating it up at a crazy rate just for the first two minutes, and then it drops anyway. I just recommend setting them all the same, but you can do as you'd like on your system. And so I'll go ahead and set this back to 25 and we'll look at the frames again, right here. 50, 51, we we're getting 51, 52, or 52 on the other. So it's like one frame. It's about a 5% if that difference. So it's really not worth it. And there was 52 right there when we left. That's what it got to at 30 watts. So it's almost ex the exact same. Then for the fans, I have the profile three, the default. You can't see it, and I don't think I can get it to focus. There's numbers right here, and I use three on both. So if we do the first one and the second one, I'm using three. And you can adjust it to lower it down, make it quieter, but I find it really quiet and great temperatures. So it usually doesn't get over 75. And depending on the game, too, if it's using the CPU and GPU pretty heavily, it could go a little higher. But overall, just a great ratio. Now, let's unplug it, and I will show you the best settings for unplugged. You want to use the same fan profile, at least I do, for unplugged and plugged in. Uh, let's see. I have to touch the screen so it like relocks to it. So you can see I just unplugged it and I'm getting 48 FPS. So I'm losing three frames, two to three frames. And now we're only drawing 17 to 18 watts. That's amazing. So it's great battery life unplugged and very close to the same frame rate. It just works great. So let me show you a critical flaw 
um, that people, other reviewers have compared, which I get it. The Steam Deck uses 15 watts, but if you throw this thing to 15 watts, you're losing performance. And I, I'm going to look up at the sky to get the frame rate higher so I can show you what I mean. So let's wait for it to balance out. So 84 frames per second or 83, 84. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop this to 15. So th three less watts. And look at the frame rate. Sixty five over twenty percent are well, just depends. It's going up a little. Basically, twenty percent loss for three watts. That's huge. I mean, that is huge. Even if you only did two additional watts, and you can even see it's actually only pulling fourteen to fifteen. It's kind of jumping between them. So it's really not a fair test to some degree. And this thing doesn't like low watts. So even if you just did 17, just two additional watts unplugged. Let's take a look at that. Look at that. 77 for two watts. Just two watts, you're getting like 15% 15, 15 performance. So I totally think it is worth running at least 17 watts when you're unplugged just to get so much more performance. If you run it at 15, you're really missing out on the system. It just doesn't like the lower power level. So anyway, keeping this video really short, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps somebody. Leave a like, subscribe if you'd like, and a comment below if you'd like me to maybe cover some additional details I've done where um, I've disabled like the CPU boost and a few other things that matter under very specific circumstances so i can do a video on that or benchmark some games and until next time y'all take care peace